Today on Rock the Park. My gosh, this is amazing. We're a world away from America's national parks. I mean, it's paradise. Yeah. In a place where people take their respect for nature to a whole new level. Oh, yeah! With one adventure that was too big even for us. Two waves that are just smacking into one another. Whoa! We're in Japan, and it all starts right now. Oh! I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. We've spent the last few years traveling around the U.S. and exploring our national parks, but the world is full of wild places. So we're taking our adventures to a whole new level. We're going global. Japan! Japan. We're going to Japan! <laughs> I'm nervous, I'm excited. Japan is home to 33 national parks and dozens of other protected lands. So when we were invited to explore a few of those special places, we couldn't say no. Hi. Japan is an island nation in East Asia, located in the Pacific Ocean. Our destination is Okinawa, nearly 1,300 miles southwest of Tokyo. I'm so excited right now, I can hardly contain myself. And then you got this kid, look at this kid. Just lounging, just sleeping away, like, like it's no big deal. See you in Tokyo. Go away. <laughs> Japan's divided into prefectures, like the US is divided into states. Okinawa is the biggest of 160 islands, making up the prefecture of Okinawa. Mainland Okinawa is home to mountains, thick forest, and you're never far from the ocean. Colton, <laughs> nice to meet you. Jack. We're a little jet lagged, but we basically thought the best way to shake that is to get out and start exploring right away. So what we're doing is we're gonna hike what's called Katsu Udake. We're gonna go up and up, and at the top we're gonna get an amazing view of the island. Great pronunciation. Thank you. Very good. Katsu Udake stands just over 1,400 feet above sea level. It's one of three mountains that dominate this part of the island. Reaching the summit means a hike through dense forest among plants and animals like we've never seen before. And this feels like straight up jungle. The rain is slowly coming down, and we're amidst all of these beautiful ferns, brush, and you can just hear the sounds of the birds in the canopy above us. Japan in general has got such an incredible diversity. You've got enormous mountains and volcanoes in northern Japan, and then down here in Okinawa, it's a subtropical climate, so it can be very wet and humid and warm. The Japanese believe that spending time in nature can be healing. They call it Shinrin Yuku or forest bathing. The belief is that spending time under the canopy of the forest trees can reduce stress, blood pressure, and increase energy. That's no secret to us. And we'll take the extra energy. This two mile trail winds its way through thick vegetation in some places and becomes more of a rock scramble in others. Oh man. Parts of this mountain are home to citrus orchards. Ooh, yes. Awesome. See that? Ah, sequasa? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we've been told to look out for this fruit called sequasa. And it's almost like a mixture between a lemon and a lime. Yes, and we've been told that, that right now is the time of year where these things are ripe for the picking. I think I got it. Hold on. Hold on there. Yeah. All right. So this is the sequasa. And what we do is we peel it open, kind of like an orange, and then, ooh. Oh, oh man! Very much like an orange. It looks a lot like an orange. Like a little clementine. Look at that. Sequasa are native only to Okinawa and Taiwan. People use it for things like jams, juices, and sauces. Sequasa. Sequasa. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow, that's good. That is really, really good. 
not to use the cliche of nature's candy, but, but it tastes like a lemon drop. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> very sweet, very tart, very good. Eating sequasa is believed to help with fatigue, which is great on this trail because it's not only steep, it's very rugged. Not to mention a huge rainstorm just passed through here, leaving the rocks wet and slick. Well, here, you don't know what to expect. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. Don't get hurt now, it's the first day. Can I blame it on the jet lag still? Is that all right? That works. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a jet lag, that, that's gotta be it. Yowie, that hurt. Maybe it's jet lag, but in this forest, some local people might suspect a different cause. Traditional Japanese culture depicts nature as being alive with spirits, and those spirits emanate from rocks, water, and even trees. Okay, so we've been told that this tree is the home of the mythical Kijimuna, which is a childlike fairy that is supposed to either be helpful and kind to you, or... Or sometimes they cause mischief. The Japanese reverence for nature is part of what motivates them to invest so much in their parks. This mountain, like the island, also carries a heavy history. Part of the Battle of Okinawa during World War II played out here, and thousands of Americans and Japanese lost their lives. Looking at this landscape now, you'd never know such devastation happened here. As we near the top, the trees clear and things start to open up. One last little scramble here. Oh, what? Oh my gosh. It's such an amazing place. I mean, you, you've got the forest and then you've got the mountains and you can see more out there, but you're still on the water. I mean, it's paradise. And this is just our first day here to see all this beauty, not in just the nature, but in the people. It shows you how you can mend even the deepest wounds. All right, day one, man. Not a bad way to start. Not at all. We've got big plans for tomorrow, heading across the sea, hoping for an adventure under the sea. But being on the sea will turn into more of an adventure than we bargained for. Waves that are just smacking into one another. Whoa! The Japanese islands of Okinawa have a special relationship with the sea. The waters surrounding them support an incredible variety of marine life, including several species of sea turtles and some that people rarely see, like giant manta rays. Today we're heading out from the large island of Okinawa onto the South China Sea to dive into these waters and explore an island where time almost stands still. We're heading to Tanaki, which is very different from what we've seen out of Okinawa so far. It's going to be much, much smaller, very traditional, and a population that's only in the three to 400 range. Tanaki is 36 miles west of Okinawa. It's just far enough off the beaten path to make it our kind of place. There are cool cave systems we plan to scuba dive, and we hope to spot a few sea turtles that are known to live around the island. The locals still live in thatched houses, working as fishermen, like their ancestors have done for hundreds of years. We're hoping to spot some whales, potentially. We've spotted some whales before, we've had some pretty good luck, so we're hoping uh, to have the same today. Whales and other sea creatures are attracted to the warm current, called the Kuroshio, moving through the South China Sea and east into the Pacific. The warmer water is rich in plankton and other tiny organisms that the larger fish like to eat, including the biggest fish in the sea. Whale sharks can grow up to 40 feet long and weigh 47,000 pounds. It's not really a whale, it's a fish, not a mammal, and unlike most sharks, it's a gentle creature, gliding through the water, mouth open, sucking in 50 pounds of plankton a day. We're taking a small charter boat with just our camera crew and producer, as well as the Japanese crew working with us. We have about an hour and a half, two hour boat ride to get to the island itself. And right now the seas are a little choppy. So it could be an adventure just getting out to the island. We'll see. We leave the port and so far it's really not that bad. I mean, yeah, the wind's whipping a little bit. The waves are a little choppy, but it's manageable. Nobody's getting seasick quite yet. And then we get out into the real open ocean and things change quickly. This is a great introduction. 
steps into the Okinawan seas, and so far, I would say that the sea is quite angry. Yeah. You're told that, that the water's a bit rough. We've been in rough water before, it's nothing like this. I mean, the swells out there are like 30 feet. We're enormous. Are we cold wearing the life jackets? Are? Oh, but I don't know about this. Is this feeling mighty real right now? <laughs> I think laughter just turned into uh, little voices of concern. You can see that there are multiple currents converging in certain parts. So it's not just this gentle, giant moving wave. It's cheese like that. Two waves that are just smacking into one another. Whoa! I'm gripping the boat with every ounce of strength I have. I realize we're 15 minutes into a two hour ride. And I don't think I can take this anymore. Oh, I guess we're turning around now. Yes, we are turning around because it's just oh that safe. Turns out, it's not just us. The usual ferry service to Tanaki was canceled today due to high seas. So we're back where we started, wetter but wiser. All right. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> We're disappointed we won't be seeing Tanaki Island on this trip, but Mother Nature has a way of reminding us who's in charge and hitting the reset button. We're all safe and that's what matters most. So we're not diving today and it's time to find a plan B. I'll tell you what it won't be. It won't be going back in that ocean. Yeah, it's not in the ocean. But plan B ends up putting us right back into the water and just as uncomfortable. The forests, mountains, and seashore of Okinawa are awesome places to find adventure. But the Japanese also look to nature to ease stress and help them re-energize. We can certainly relate to that. So when we heard about a thousand-year-old Japanese meditation that requires you to be still beneath a freezing cold, powerful waterfall, we knew we had to try it. For me, meditation or prayer is a big part of my experience in nature. But I've never done a form of meditation that forces you to adapt to really rough situations. I know that this is gonna be an incredible challenge for me in many ways. One, I don't like the cold. Two, I'm not exactly a quiet person. Being incredibly cold and absolutely silent, that's gonna be interesting and probably rather difficult. We're starting out just 10 miles outside the city of Nago in an area that looks like a roadside rest area. This is where we begin to hike to Ta Falls on the Hainan River following a paved trail under telephone wires. So far, this does not feel like we are unplugging. Then, as we come around a storage building, the trail disappears and we realize the only way to reach the falls is by wading through the water. All right, this is where we get in. This is where we see exactly how cold this water is. That's right, moment of truth. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be very painful. Oh, this is gonna be very painful. <laughs> the Hainan River is fed by mountain streams. The deeper the water gets, the colder it feels. I'm really excited about this. Um, one of the ways that I find mental clarity just in life is I withdraw into nature and I practice meditation. I do it frequently. I try to work to be present and live in the moment but I think part of what meditation is, is taking yourself to a different place. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Does the meditation have to begin at the waterfall? Because I'd kind of like to escape to that happy place right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, is this, this is swimming. We're gonna have to climb around. That's really deep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not swimming. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, why okay, don't we right try up here? go, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of ropes along the riverbank so we can scramble up and over the deeper part of the river. Be careful with that, don't, <laughs> yeah. don't give it too much trust now. Right. The adventure has already begun. Yeah, you're <laughs> telling me. <laughs> oh, I think I can hear it. Wow. It's absolutely perfect too. There's two little streams. Oh one my for you, gosh. one for me. I've got so many emotions right now. I can't tell if I'm happy, excited, or fearful. <laughs> but it is so beautiful, my gosh. Top Falls drops about 65 feet in these twin streams. 
it would be worth walking up river just to see this. But we didn't come just to look. Let's prepare. Let's prepare. People who do this as a regular spiritual practice usually dress in a ceremonial white robe or loincloth. We're not doing it quite so formally, but we're serious about looking for a transforming experience, a way to renew our spirit. This will put us in a position to really dig deep, to really look inside ourselves and say, okay, find peace. Find peace in being uncomfortable and learn how to become comfortable. Our goal is to spend as much time as we possibly can in this meditation. So we'll see how long that is. Yes. <laughs> Without risking hypothermia. <laughs> I'm the type of person that likes to just dive right under and get used to it. So I go underwater and it is just bitter, bitter cold. I have started to experience something that I've never had before. This water seems to be so cold, it's hard to breathe. I sit down, fold my hands, and attempt to begin my meditation. I'm trying to let go of the pain and the cold, but it's just not working. The water is beating against my head, and all I can think about is this pressure of the water hitting my back. It feels pretty awful. <laughs> it's making me wonder, should I even be doing this? It's at this moment we question if we've gotten into more than we can handle. Oh, yeah! At the foot of an ice-cold waterfall in Okinawa, Japan, we're attempting an ancient Japanese meditation technique designed to renew the spirit, but all we can feel is the bitter cold and the pain. Oh, I start heading back towards shore. This is something that I just don't quite know if I'm prepared to do. I decide that I need to take a moment before I go back and try this again. Then it hits me. I've been treating this like a personal challenge, so it's been all about pride. If I can put that aside, maybe I can do this. Instead of fighting the waterfall, I try for a posture of humility. Nature can make you feel really small. Sometimes it drops you to your knees. And when I finally focus on being still and stop fighting it, suddenly everything changes. As I'm sitting here, feeling cold, feeling the current rush down me, I have found peace. Once I get into that frame of mind, I feel like I could stay here all day, almost. I feel these two massive bursts of water that just come crashing down on top of my neck and my head. And it's enough to jolt me out of my meditative state and instantly my eyes are wide open and I'm right back to being a little cold and a little uncomfortable. I'm done, but Jack is definitely in the zone. It feels like an eternity has passed. In this moment, I begin to reflect and offer up a prayer of gratitude of being able to look at the blessings that are in my life, the good times, the bad times, the struggles that I've gotten through. And this moment represents those struggles and being able to root yourself in something that is greater than your current situation. And I focus on peaceful thoughts, tranquility, and just being still in that moment. Suddenly it hits me. I've been under here for a long time and I'm ready to wrap it up. This, oh, I don't even yeah. know what to say. I, that's so cold. Yes, I am very, very cold. But then, I don't know, I, I really took a deep breath and I thought about it. And while I was under there, I was able to find something for a moment. The moment I got on that train of gratitude, I was able to find peace that let me relax and enjoy the moment. This experience right here, is the epitome of why I travel. To broaden my horizons, to experience something new, and to really get out there and learn something more about myself and about the world that I live in. This is unlike anything I've ever experienced, and I mean that in every possible way. That could be a description for this whole Okinawa adventure. It's inspired us, it's tested us, and it's shown us that a love for nature and for places where it's honored and protected can be common ground for people around the world. If we can do it, so can you. <laughs>
So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.